Start implementing doing intermittent fasting daily with the 16-8, but also picking about two to three days out of the week where you're doing 24 to 36 hour fast that can help give the digestive system a break. But also more importantly than that, Hey, what's up, health enthusiasts and fasters? Dr. Legrand here, here for another video, and today we're going to answer one of you guys' questions. I left a post a while back to ask you what kind of videos you want me to post. And so this question comes from Christina Smolden. Sorry if I butchered that name. But uh, ask the question, how do you know if you fasted long enough to heal your gut lining? Estimate on how long it takes. Great question. And so in order to answer this question, and I know I'm going to say this, but it really does depend on the person, but hear me out because there could be multiple reasons of why you're having digestive issues. Okay, so it could be that you have IBS. It could be that you have diverticulitis or Crohn's disease. It could be that you have food sensitivity. It could be that you have acid reflux issues. It could be that you have ulcers. There could be a number of different things that could be the culprit of the problem. And I have talked in my videos before about how fasting can help the digestive system. I talked about, you know, just recently in one of my videos about H. pylori, uh, you know, issues with there and how fasting can actually help with that as well as one of the treatment options and some other kind of issues with digestion, how fasting can help. So let's first look at a few things. So I'm going to talk about a few different things, and hopefully this does answer your question when it comes to how long you need to fast to be able to know that your gut lining is healed. So let's look at the food sensitivity problem that could be the issue. Now, I've talked about this before, how fasting can help you determine if you do have a food sensitivity. So what do I mean by this? Is that when you decide to do a fast, whether it's three days, seven days, however long you decide to do a fast for, when you're reintroducing foods, every time you introduce one particular food item, so whether that's meats, carbs, or you know, uh, wheat, dairy, you want to introduce it one at a time each day. When you're doing that, you can see if your body reacts to it. Then you can know if it is at least a food intolerance or food sensitivity or a true food allergy, if you have a reaction, because that can help you really determine that. Now, once you know that, then what I suggest as far as how long does it take, now this doesn't mean as far as how long you need to fast completely from foods, but if you know, for example, once you've done that through fasting, let's say it's wheat that you find when you reintroduce it after you've fasted for about three to seven days, and you find that that is a culprit, that you haven't started a reaction where you have joint pain, or maybe your skin flares up, uh, or you tend to have more headaches, you're just finding a lot of different symptoms that you're getting from reaction or you have your digestive system that's going, going bonkers, crazy. So what you wanna do is eliminate that particular food and usually it takes about four to six weeks to get food out of our system. So once you do that for six weeks, that gives time for the gut to heal itself. You know, what we call is leaky gut. If we do have a food sensitivity that's penetrating through our digestive system to cause a lot of those flare ups. So that I would say, you know, four to six weeks eliminating it, then you could see if you can tolerate it. And if not after that time, it's probably a true food allergy. If you don't want to do a food allergy test because they can be pretty pricey and expensive. But that is definitely one way to know if your gut lining is healed through a food sensitivity type of test is fasting and eliminating, not fasting, but at least eliminating that food from your diet for about four to six weeks, okay? Now let's say it's something else. Let's say it's like IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So the patients that I do see that do come and see me for irritable bowel syndrome, I see a lot of them. We do incorporate fasting because I know it is really beneficial. Even for me as a person that deals with IBS, I have found fasting to be one of the best ways of treating IBS and there's a couple reasons that people can have IBS. It could be a food sensitivity, it could be they just have a very sensitive stomach, but it also could even mean that there is a stress component about it. So really, anxiety can contribute. It isn't necessarily it's the root cause of the problem, but it can contribute with the IBS. Pretty much every IBS patient I see that comes to see me always has some kind of component of stress or anxiety or depression about the situation that they're dealing with. 
So what you need to do is make sure that you're covering that. As far as what I always say about the triangle of health, there's three aspects of health. There's the physical aspect, the physical ailments, whatever's going on physically. There's also the biochemical aspect that needs to be addressed. So through either through diet, nutrition, supplementation, changing your body chemistry, something that we, I do a lot with. And then of course the mental emotional aspect that needs to be addressed. All three aspects need to be met for your health. If one of those are not being met, it can still have the problem. So doing things such as seeing a therapist about it or neurofeedback is one thing that I talked about in one of my videos. I'll make sure to leave a card up here about it. But neurofeedback is a great way to reduce stress and anxiety and help with also even depression. But once we eliminate that, fasting, doing that on a consistent basis, especially intermittent fasting, cutting down the window frame, and also incorporating 24 to 36 hour fast, you know, one to two days out of the week. This helps give the digestive system a break. What I mean by that is anything in life, we need breaks so that we can take time to rest, we can take time to repair, so does the digestive system. So when we give our digestive system time to repair itself, it can start healing the digestive lining. Now you don't need to do extensive crazy, you know, 20 plus day fast. You can do it weekly. And I've seen with my patients when they start incorporating this, people who have IBS, your old bowel syndrome, they, within just a couple months by implementing it, their results are far better than they were before. Now, if it's something like, you know, diverticulitis or Crohn's disease that you're dealing with, doing extensive fast by incorporating, you know, to unlock autophagy can really help benefit that. Now, as always, you need to check with your physician if this is something you can do because there's a lot of medications if you're taking can uh, really be an issue when you're fasting, especially doing prolonged fasting. But it can certainly start healing the process. But what's more important than just doing a prolonged fast is incorporating and changing what the cause of the problem is. And for most digestive issues, it has to do with the foods that we're eating on a daily basis. And you, what you want to do, especially for Crohn's and diverticulitis, you want to go more vegetarian or vegetable-based types of foods for at least a small time period, for at least a couple months. If you start doing that, especially if they're more pre-digested, so doing more soups, doing more you know, steam-cooked vegetables, and also even doing veggie juices, it could be easier on the digestive system. But incorporating more of that before you start to do your long-term fast or incorporating fasting, you've already put in the habit of eating good, healthy foods. And you can see a big result and change by incorporating that along with fasting, whether you do three or seven day fasts, that can start reversing things with the diverticulitis and the Crohn's disease within just, you know, about three or four months. But again, it really does depend on the person. So I know you guys want a concrete time frame, but everybody is unique. Everybody is unique and has different body types and different conditions and backgrounds, so it really does depend. But I tell you, if you start incorporating changing your diet with, you know, especially when you have a very sensitive stomach or digestive system, by incorporating things that are easy to digest, such as vegetables, especially pre-digested, then it's going to be easier for you. Now, as far as when it comes to the acid reflex issue, indigestion or gassing and bloating. I talked about this in just recent one of my other videos too about um, how to reduce bloating. But you wanna be taking things that, uh, such as pancreatic enzymes, digestive enzymes, take more bitter herbs that can help stimulate digestion, but as well as doing fasting on a regular basis. So it's not how long you need to do a fast, it's more of how frequently you need to doing a fast to help start reversing this. So what I mean by frequently, start implementing doing intermittent fasting daily with the 16-8, but also picking about two to three days out of the week where you're doing 24 to 36 hour fast that can help give the digestive system a break. But also more importantly than that is how are you breaking your fast? And are you still being consistent with eating healthy foods after your fast? Because for example, if you go and have a big hefty meal, like a big steak, 
after your fast, that's going to be really hard on your digestive system. You definitely need to be taking things simple, small, like soups after you when you need to break your fast. And then after a while, for a couple hours, then you can start incorporating a little bit more uh, foods, such as meats and stuff like that. But you, that's really important when you're breaking the fast. I hope this answered your question. If it did not, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below or you can DM me. Uh, anybody else watching this video also, if you have more questions about how long it takes to heal the digestive tract and lining, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. And if you are new here and not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and hit that, that subscribe button. We do post videos every Tuesday and Thursday on health tips and also fasting videos. So go ahead and click the subscribe button as well. Check out some of these playlist videos that I'll leave here. Until next time, this is Dr. McGrand signing out, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.